Recently, Key of David presenter Gerald Flurry addressed members of the Philadelphia Church of God during the Feast of Tabernacles. This segment of his presentation focuses on Psalm 113. So we have uh, a few psalms that are, that are directing us uh, outside the psalms, and I've talked to you about that before, and it really adds some depth to uh, what we're talking about and what we're interested in. If there's a, let's say, a repetition like I showed you before, and you're there really saying that essentially the same thing said outside in another book in the Bible. And the re there is something God is telling us there, and it's a tremendous way to enhance our Bible study. And we need to really take advantage of the opportunity. Notice Psalm 113 in verse 1. Praise you the Lord, praise O you servants, and the eternal, praise the name of the eternal. Praise there uh, three times in that one verse, so God is interested in, a, in that kind of an attitude, brethren. If, 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 you really, if we really know God, we're going to praise Him. And we're going to thank him. It it's a, it's comes from our own understanding. And God wants us to do that for our own happiness. An understanding that really helps us grow spiritually. And it keeps our minds on God. Verse 2, blessed be the name of the eternal from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun and to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. His name is to be praised. That's a given. We just praise His name. But oh, how David praised God's name. And how some of those great men of, of the Bible really knew how to praise God. But here uh, you have something... Uh, where it says, sun rising to the sun setting, we are to praise God from sun rising all the way down to the sun setting. You will ought to be praising God. It's a way of life, a way of thinking. It's a way of having God's thinking in your mind. And this is, he's, he's, we're being pointed outside, but uh, that's, that's how much God wants to, us to be praising him and it, in, in our mind we're doing that or we're not doing it enough and we all need to grow there for sure uh, verse 4 it says the eternal is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens who is likened to the eternal our God who dwells on high who humbles himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth a lot of praise here verse 7 he raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the dunghill. If you look at verse 7 and you go to 1 Samuel 2 and verse 8, it is exactly the same except for one word. Instead of needy, it's the beggar out of the dunghill. He takes the lowliest people on this earth and brings them right up from the dunghill. And that's and, and, and this psalm repeats that very verse. And what is that about? And where does that come from? Well, and then verse 8, that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. Now, that's the first part of that is, is also the same in uh, verse 8 of 1 Samuel 2. Then verse 9, he makes the barren woman to keep house. And to be joyful, mother of children, praise you the Lord. Uh, this is something special. And, and even the reference there says, see uh, 1 Samuel 2 and verse 5. But it also should say verse 8. Because it's all more of it in verse 8. But at least they take you back into Hannah's prayer and prophecy. So even carnal-minded people can understand this. But there's a lot of prophecy here. And Hannah 
had some prophecy that would uh, impress anybody. And I think it's one of that uh, chapter in the former prophets about her is one of the best chapters I've ever written. There's something there that this, this author wants to refer you to or make a great advertisement there and say, now look, I'm, I'm, I'm plagiarizing this, these other verses over in, in 1 Samuel 2. And, 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 and really, God is telling us that, uh, that we can go there and say, well, what is it? Well, this must be an example because this, this chapter is about praising God. So if you go over to Hannah and her example here in 1 Samuel 2, you find an example that really knew how to praise God. And we want to learn from her. If we uh, are going through that psalm and don't really understand it maybe as well as we'd like, and if you like that subject and we all should be excited about that subject, then we can uh, go over to 1 Samuel 2. So, uh, let me just read to you again 7, 8, and 9 here. It says, He raises up the poor out of the dust. And just listen to how closely it is to what I'm going to read to you from 1 Samuel 2. Verse 7 says, He raises up the poor out of the dust, or the beggar out of the dust, and lifts the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes. And then verse 9, He makes the barren woman to keep house, and to be joyful mother of children. Praise you the Lord. Now what could that be talking about? He says, He makes the barren woman to keep house, and to be joyful mother of children. What is God really talking about there? He's talking about us getting a very big picture, and, and uh, make sure we're able to be joy, a joyful mother of children by the billions. That's what it's talking about. And how can you wrap your mind around that? It, well, it takes a lot of study. And it takes a lot of prayer and of seeking and searching for God. Okay, 1 Samuel 2 and verse 8, let's go over there. Here's what it says. And he raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. Wow. Now, would you say that's praising God? Think about this. This is about you. It's about us getting prepared to be the mother of billions of children. That's the way it's expressed in the Bible. That's what this is all about. How are we going to be able to do that to all those people unless God has educated us? I mean, really, brethren, this takes, a, this takes a, an education beyond our imagination even. And that's what we're here for, though, is to prepare for that. That's what Mr. Armstrong tried so hard to get his people to see, that they didn't get it. They thought they were just there to get saved because, well, God wanted it, some people to be in his kingdom, but that's not it at all. We're here to prepare to be a mother, a mother, a loving mother to all those children that God is going to call and bring into his family. You know they're going to need a, an education like you, you uh, would find hard to uh, even understand because they are so corrupt and so evil in a lot of cases where it's going to take a long time just to unlearn what they've learned and we're going to have to be a loving mother to take want to serve those people all of them and what a vision this is it just is so wondrous. Now verse 5. This is also part of that 7, 8, and 9 over in uh, 
Psalm 113. And verse 5 says, They that were full have hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren has borne seven. This is Hannah's prayer and her prophecy. She's talking about the barren has borne seven. And she has many children that has waxed feeble. She she's, sees all the way down to these seven eras. And many of the children are feeble. They're feeble and they don't, they're not teachable. And that really upset Hannah. And you can see that in verse 9 of Psalm 113. But you need to later, brethren, compare those two or those verses and see what, what, what it's all about. And, and see what a, a prophecy she has here and what an example she is for God. They're just, it just well, it's one of the best in the Bible. And they had just come out of the judges period. And that was a bloody, bloody time, the bloodiest time ever in Israel. And all of the priests, well, the priest Eli was corrupt and his sons were corrupt. And they were taking advantage of people. And here came a lady that saw all of that and was so dedicated to God because he gave her a son. And she said, if you do that to me, I will turn him over to Shiloh and the tabernacle and to serve you forever. Now that was the goal she had for her son. She saw what was happening in Israel and what she could do to really help turn things around. So she wanted Samuel to come on the scene and she trained him so well that uh, she had um, a lot to do with him becoming a prophet. She knew how to teach a child. And don't we all need to work on that, brethren? To teach those children to be the best that they can possibly be. Now, we can't make them go that way if they choose another way. We certainly can't stop them. But, uh, again, the thing that I think is not coincidence is all of this ties right into what? Well, the former prophets. So there must have been either a prophet or apostle there to receive that. And also he must have supporters to reach this world. And we need to know about those former prophets for therefore this last hour, mostly. Mr. Armstrong didn't speak about that much. That's because all of it that is mainly being fulfilled today, right now. In this last hour. So that Psalm 113 and verses 7 through 9 is, in my mind, just a great advertisement. Well, okay. Now, if you want to get more depth out of this subject of praising God, let it, let, this, this author is saying, okay, here's a way where you can learn a lot more about it. And you can have a just extended depth. How could you not learn from what she's saying? She, she's saying that God is going to put the pillars or put the world on the pillars. That's you. He's going to put the world on our, our shoulders. And how, how, how exciting can that be in our minds? It's all tied to God's work and God's family. And if we don't do it together, well, uh, we can't do much at all. This is not a small issue. If you'll just look at that verse 1 again. Praise you, the eternal. Praise, O you servants of the eternal. Praise the name of the eternal. You can see that's the title here. Just to praise the eternal. Well, now, that's 
That's not natural to think that way. Going around from sunup to sundown, praising God. You don't see much of that in the world, brethren. You really do not. And he, uh, just looking, uh, it, I think uh, praise is mentioned uh, at least five times in this little psalm here of nine verses. Let me go back to uh, Hannah. Uh, chapter 4 is the origin of Samuel's colleges. If you want to read that chapter, let me tell you, it's one of the most interesting chapters I think I have ever written, as I said before. And uh, certainly that's revelation that we really do need. It shows you where God's work is if you look at that very closely. If you study this, I'm telling you, it's one of the greatest examples in the Bible of a person who praised God and then showed you action of how that praised God. It, it, it wasn't just in her mind. She showed you action. And she put her son in the tabernacle at Shiloh. And she, she went there time and time and time again. She wanted to make this son be so special that he could help turn Israel back to God on the level they had before. And it's right there in the former prophets, and it's mainly for us. It's mainly for this last hour. And what, did she, what do you think she did about raising of Samuel's raising up three colleges. You'd have to say, well, now Hannah had a lot to do with that. Three colleges. And uh, a lot of people call Samuel the father of prophecy because he institutionalized prophecy. <laughs> That's what we do. We institutionalize it. And tell the world exactly what's coming. And give them an opportunity to repent and, go, and give themselves to God. So let's examine it a little more. And you might also remember that Samuel prepared the way for the great King David. Tradition says Samuel was just 13 years old when God first appeared to him. Well, how about that, you teenagers? 13 years old and God appeared to him. He was on the right track. I mean, that, that's spectacular. He had to grow up very fast. What a mother to prepare a child for that. It's amazing. Now, we know this was a special case, and we can't all uh, quite uh, measure up to that. But we can certainly let God give us all the power He will to do our very best to produce children that really do look to God as much as we possibly can ourselves. He had a, he had a certainly a, a very good father, but you have to say that his mother really was the one that shines in that example. She was, and God made her wait quite a long time before she could she would could even have a, a child and she she so much wanted a child as women usually do at least if they're still sound minded and she so wanted a a man child and just told god look if you'll just give me this man child I'll dedicate him to you in every way. And she followed through on that. I mean, she made sure he was up there by, with the uh, high priest who was corrupt, but still was teaching some things that were right. And, and she was very much aware of what her son was learning and she, she let Samuel begin to bring some spiritual life and prophecy right into the tabernacle. And it hadn't been there for many years. 
What an example. It's one of the best. Isn't that how great nations are made? By rearing the children as much as we can and just doing everything we can to dedicate them to God. And there's just no, there's no way to know how much they, they can do. And you don't realize the, the potential sometimes that our children have. God personally shut up her womb. <laughs> now that makes it more difficult. Uh, no, no, no children for you, Hannah. Because he saw what was the potential in this woman. And so he tried her more than other women were tried. No child. She was barren like a lot of those eras she prophesied about. Some of, some of them are weak and barren. They're not serving God and producing the family that they ought to. They're not doing that. And that concerns God. And it should concern us. And I'm sure it does. Look at the terrible things that are happening today in our own church that you hear so much about. What does that mean? What does that tell us? Do you think they would measure up to what Hannah did? No, they wouldn't. They certainly do not at this point. But what a, what a woman and what she did is, is uh, something to, uh, to get our attention. As she went to the tabernacle in Shiloh, and prayed there, imploring God to give her a man child. She went to the to Shiloh in the uh, tabernacle and was asking for that man child. When he finally did come, she really did uh, dedicate him to God. And she said uh, she was going to leave him there that he may appear before the eternal and there abide forever. Forever. Well, that's, that's spiritual depth. How profound that woman was. And how she wanted a son to be dedicated to God. And she reared a prophet. And she also realized all the spiritual poverty that Israel had just gone through. And she wanted so much to help change that. And that was a, really a a, a critical part of her bringing up, up a child. She was in horror about some of the things that were happening all this period that they were just that was just ending, and that's the period of the judges. They did that which was right in their own eyes. That's what Israel's doing today. It's what the Laodiceans are doing today. They're doing what is right in their own eyes. And look at, look at what is happening. Just look at that. It's sad. When Hannah understood what God was doing, she prayed a remarkable prayer. Hannah must have been a prophetess since God only reveals truth to his apostles and prophets. Right there in Shiloh, Hannah delivered a prayerful psalm of prophecy. And I think it is one of the most profound prophecies in the Bible. You can read it in 1 Samuel 2, verses 1 through 10. And it's filled, brethren, filled with praise for God. And I'll show you that. Let's go through them. Verse 1. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the, the eternal. My horn is exalted in the eternal. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies. Because I rejoice in your salvation. Well, that's great. There is none holy as the eternal, for there is none beside you. Neither is there any rock like our God. What praise! And what an example Samuel had in his home and in, in, in the uh, tabernacle. She kept check on him all the time. To do her job. Verse 3. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. 
Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the eternal is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumbled are girded with strength. That's praising God. The Jews still read this, this chapter uh, on uh, trumpets. It's a good message for trumpets. And it's about Hannah and what she was and what she was doing and what a message she was delivering that God revealed to her. I mean, this, you just don't find uh, many examples like this in the Bible. And we need to learn more about it and how much can that add to Psalm 113. If you did nine verses can open up all of this. If you'll just look at the advertisement and say, well, I, I want to check this out. That's, that's showing you something that you need to understand if you want to really get into this subject. And we all want that. And what a blessing to be able to expand our understanding like that. So you can see, I think those are some of the uh, highlights of these psalms, especially those non-David psalms. All our literature is available free of charge at no cost or obligation to you. Request The Former Prophets and The God Family Vision. Order now. The preceding program was a paid presentation of The Key of David, brought to you by the Philadelphia Church of God.